how 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 we so All right, so welcome to our special edition of our How We Sold series. Today, we are going through a very interesting case study right here at Woodsville Close. Just to give a bit of backdrop, these uh, two landed properties that we're selling right now, this is the first one, which is uh, number 53A Woodsville Close. The other one is over there, later we'll show you, uh, and that is number 55. So I'm with George Peng, our senior consultant, listing manager, and uh, he was the one that had successfully sold these two landed property. All right. Okay, great. So, maybe quick brief on the location for our audience. That is already Poise Mall and Poise Residences. So, that is the MRT station of Potong Pase. So, right here. Yep. But in uh, which district is this? 13. Yeah, I think so. I think it's in District 13. <laughs> yeah. This is in D13. City Fringe area. Extremely hard to get a landed property right here. And these two landed are freehold status. So, um, why are we going through this case study? Because there are, I think, close to about 10 different kind of like roadblocks to get through the sale. And also, if let's say you are owning one of the very old landed properties that might have gone through different generations, this uh, probably might be one of the most interesting and important episodes that uh, will help you as well, eventually, if you intend to sell your landed home. So, George, let's talk about this home. Uh, maybe give a backdrop of who were the owners. Okay, you got it sold already, all right. Right, so 53 and 55 both owned by uh, the Singapore Tamilian Association. This unit was actually put up on the market for quite some time ago. Of course, uh, unfortunately, during that period of time, it was not able to move. When they got in touch with us, uh, the entire prep work just for this unit itself took us about four to five months because we just wanted to make sure that we go through all the intricacies, all the details to make sure that at the end of the day, when the deal goes through, there are no other further implications, be it for the buyers or for the sellers. Right, so four to five months, uh, just like we were just going through the exclusive form, we saw that the date that our clients onboarded with us, that was in October 2021. Yes, that's correct, October 2021. And then uh, the date that this property was sold was actually on a very important date. Yeah, and that is actually on uh, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day yes. and, and uh, when is that Valentine's Day? Uh? 14th of February. Yeah, my wife don't allow me to celebrate. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, wife does, uh. His wife does. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I was here. Huh? I was here. You don't also? Yeah, I was here. Oh, yeah, he was here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we both don't celebrate Valentine's Day. So, October 2021, yeah. February 2022. Yes. The actual um, so called like uh, viewing period yeah. uh, and intense marketing period was only two weeks. We took two weeks to sell these two landed homes. Yep. But the entire due diligence process, I'll call that due diligence process, took yep. about five and a half months. Yeah, that's correct, that's okay. correct. Right, so first up, a lot of landed owners that are owning uh, such landed properties that are meant uh, to be tear down. In PRB, we call them the category one kind of landed, which is uh, something like this, that uh, most of the time, either a developer will buy over them, to tear down, rebuild into something like that one over there, those three huge, uh, humongous, three and a half story landed. Or a uh, buyer might tear down and then uh, rebuild themselves, right? So uh, I think a, a lot of misconception that uh, owners have uh, owning kind of landed properties that they thought that most of the buyer audience will definitely be developers. But uh, at PRB, we believe that actually by proper positioning, you can actually open up to the whole market audience. Yep. So eventually, actually, this was bought by an individual owner. Individual owner, and likewise for the, the other, other one. one. Yep. Right, so they are not developers. They are not developers. Right, so basically, individual Singapore owners they are buying uh, to rebuild themselves. So let's talk about the first um, usual due diligence that we'll check at PLB is that we will definitely buy the land title from SLA. Yes. Yeah, and what was it uh, that you discovered, George? Right, so uh, of course, when we buy the land title deeds, uh, we wanted to know who are the owners. That would usually be the first thing that we want to check it out. And then of course, subsequent uh, due deed that we wanted to check is uh, whether will the sellers actually incur any seller stamp duty uh, if they were to sell within the three years of the window, if there were a change in terms of the ownership. Of course, uh, the other thing that we want to check is uh, for this particular case, which is very unique because uh, the land plot is sitting on a freehold land plot, okay. but the strata units uh, have already been split into leasehold, which is 9,999 years. And what that happens is that when the buyer chooses to buy over the entire land, they will then definitely be incurring an ABSD. Right, so uh, a bit of brief backdrop again. These two landed homes, number 53A and number 55, 
They are both owned by um, the Singapore Tamil, Tamilian Association. Singapore Tamilian Association. Yeah. 53 is a pure landed. That means this is just like any other landed properties. Yeah. Yeah, you can buy, you can tear it down, you can rebuild. However, this one is a little bit unique. Let's walk over here. Yeah, this was the one that George was talking about. So this one at 55, basically the land is sitting on a freehold land. However, level one and level two, there are actually um, strata built up. Yes. Of 9999 leasehold. Yes. And uh, what is the implication if somebody would just buy it like that? Right. Yeah. So if we didn't do the due D and then uh, the buyer just buy it as it is because they think that, you know, I'm buying into a freehold land plot, uh, what they will be incurring is uh, the additional buyer stamp duty. Of course, the additional buyer stamp duty will then be tacked onto the second property. The value will then be determined by the valuer that's being appointed by the banks. Yeah, because these are uh, actually considered two different strata properties, right? And it's not actually considered a full landed. Yeah, and the second implication was that because their lease uh, tunnel title is different. Alright, so for this land, there is a reversionary interest. And what reversionary interest means is that uh, if you sell this entire land or this entire unit, uh, but without the current owner surrendering the reversionary interest, uh, what happens is up 9,999 years, the current owners will then be able to claim the interest back on this land. Right, so because uh, the land title is freehold, uh, if the next buyer buy over, technically they're just buying the two strata units. Yes, they're not correct. buying the land. Yeah. Right. So um, eventually, uh, based on this roadblock, what was um, the due diligence and what was the solution? So of course, uh, we reached out to some of our vendor partners, uh, law firm. When we found out about this, we also we were being upfront with the buyers and tell them about what are the potential uh, implications that they might get themselves into. And we actually have all these clauses uh, to be written out in the OTP. And of course, when we are buying about this kind of land, this is not a standard kind of OTP. Mm. So um, all these clauses have been added in. And uh, in all fairness, we send this OTP across to the buyers to let them have a look before the stunning took place. Yeah, so full transparency between uh, the entire process between sellers and buyers because most importantly this must be a happy transaction and yep. every party must be aware of what's going on so eventually um, I still remember throughout the five and a half months George was actually, actually talking to so many different law firms yep. some of the law firms uh, didn't even want to entertain us yep. yeah, and because the case was simply too complicated mm. uh, eventually we finally found a law firm yep. that is experienced to do this kind of um, transactions so um, when an eventual buyer bought over this Mm. Uh, what are the things that they need to do um, in order to sort of like combine everything together? Right, so of course if they choose to uh, rebuild, they'll have to write into the land titles registry to amalgamate these two units into one uh, before they can kick start with any uh, redevelopment of these land plots. Eventually the buyer buy with yeah. um, this knowledge and it's all yeah. written into the OTP. Yes, that's correct. And uh, for the buyer of the other one, 53, yeah. Basically, yeah, it's a very clean purchase. A lot of interest were on 53. This was more complicated. However, uh, our clients wanted to sell at one go. Yes. That means they want to make sure that uh, the deal is uh, in sync together, yes. right? Because right. We, they don't want to leave one unit just hanging there, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So how did we coordinate these two uh, right. sale concurrently? So when we launch it, uh, because uh, the whole intention of selling this is that this is currently an investment property by the Singapore Tamilian Association. So when we convey across to the buyers, we will actually um, have a bit of buffer time to say that okay look through your interest and if you are keen put in your offers and then we will want to conclude on that certain day and certain time and because it is an association they have the trustees they have the ESCO members all of them have to gather over here which is why the final date was being concluded on the 14th of February right yeah. okay and uh, that brings us to the next uh, due diligence check now for inter terraces if you want to rebuild um, the standard kind of land plot width uh, is actually 6 meters. Yep. However, these two land plots, though their lands are huge, uh, approximately is at about 1,008 square feet each in terms of land size. Yep. However, their land plot width is at 5.5 meters. Yeah. So based on this, uh, what are some of the things that buyers need to, need to look out for? Right. So of course, we put forward the disclaimer and say that 5.5 uh, meters is definitely falling short in terms of the URA um, guidelines for an intermediate terraces. But of course, when the buyers were to go into rebuild, it is down to them to... The onus is basically on the buyers to seek the approval from BCA and URA to fully redevelop this into a full build-up into terrace. Right. So uh, that can be done. It's just that uh, all these things have to be made known because sometimes if, let's say, you were to buy a landed property, yep. you didn't know about such guidelines, then you might be buying based on uh, kind of like a blind faith. And of course, another thing is that if you were to look at the three um, landed that has already been fully built up to three and a half, 
you will notice that actually their setback is pushed back a little bit further behind because there's a standard setback of about 7.5 meters that you need to go. Yeah. So the depth over here is actually at about 30 meters. So this is actually a setback that um, is at a, a far further front kind of um, dimension. So the moment you build up, you will need to push it back to quite a similar range as that three landed. So these are some of the small little things that you need to take note of. And uh, of course, one other thing, uh, George, is that next due diligence check, uh, because these two landed homes were owned by uh, Tamler Association. Association land is a little bit different because back in the days when they were allowed to purchase, yep. associations are allowed to buy residential properties uh, to be used for their usage, yep. office address and things like that. Sometimes there might be special clauses that uh, has been tied in with their purchase by an SLA back in the past. Yep. So, um, Based on this, how do we do a check to ensure that um, nothing is hindering our sellers from selling? Right, so for this, uh, we also consulted with our law firm because this is not something that we do almost on a day-in, day-out basis. Of course, we hit our law firm's advice to check on the quorum, the resolution, as well as the AGM to say that you know they actually fulfill the criteria in order for the association to have the power to sell uh, before we can issue the OTP. And further in from that, actually the land title is being owned by the association. However, uh, there's also a further kind of ownership in the sense that four trustees are being appointed uh, to sign, right? What is the next thing that uh, you went on to check in terms of the trustee's name? Halfway through, there was a change in terms of the trustee's name and then of course the thing that rings our bell is that hey, will there be a seller stamp duty that might potentially be imposed? Right. So we also done the check and uh, what we found out is that in terms of ownership, there is no change but the only change is in terms of the trustee name and as such, there will not be any seller stamp duty that will be imposed. Right, so uh, as you can see, this entire due diligence process took us close to about five over months because there was a lot of emails through and fro uh, with SLA, with URA, and then also with the different law firms. Most importantly is that we want to make sure that this is a clean transaction because uh, whether you are a seller owning uh, an old landed property or maybe you are a seller of an association owning a landed if you were to just sell it in the market like that, just issue a standard OTP, you might get yourself into a kind of a very tricky situation because the moment you issue an OTP, with so many things not checked and being very unclear about it, the whole deal might get stagnant. Lawsuits might begin between the seller and buyer and this can drag on for years. So though it's a five over months process, but it's definitely worth it for our clients. And uh, I think even as a buyer, the moment you are very clear about what you are getting yourself into, you are very um, comfortable with all the terms and conditions, then I think that's the most important thing to have a happy transaction. I think this land plot is also very interesting because if you look at it, on the right hand side is a new freehold project that is sprouting out. Um, here we're left with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine landed properties. The plot ratio is also very different because um, this is a very different zoning. Yeah. You can see um, this project called Myra. Yeah. It's going to go up pretty high. So plot ratio here is about 2.1. So what might happen is that in future, of course, there might be a chance that if the nine owners uh, combined are willing to sell yeah. to a developer, there'll be a chance of a future kind of on block together. Yeah, so what do you think about this, Josh? Yeah, I think that could potentially happen because if you go back to the hands of time, um, this Myra condo used to be along this same stretch and it all used to look like this. I think most importantly is that uh, buying a landed property, there are so many different tenor, there are so many different rules uh, governing residential landed properties, ownership as well. So importantly is to do proper due diligence check with uh, your brokers, your partners, and even your law firms as well. And I think uh, something very interesting is that once the video home tour is being launched, yeah. total how many inquiries do you receive? I think we receive over um, 80 over inquiries uh, in just a short span of about uh, a week. Yeah, and in fact, I think a fun fact is that when you guys uh, were filming the home tour, yeah. the venture buyer actually uh, was just driving past and saw you guys filming it. Yeah. That buyer actually became the eventual buyer that bought one of the landed here. Yes, that's correct, that's correct. They also recognise that uh, it is from our team that were marketing this unit. And then, um, at the point of time, we are definitely still at the early stages, but back then, uh, we have already done all the checks. We have already get our builder to walk through. We know about the potential, uh, because if you have to take a look at the entire landscape, Senate, Lander and Cliff, that is only two-storey landed zoning, but of course, that is a pure landed and Cliff. And uh, over here, you can potentially build until three and a half storey. Uh, GFA is about uh, 5,500 square feet. Right, yeah. awesome. 
Great, so last but not least, we need to talk about the drafting of the OTP because that is the final and most important step. So, yeah. run us through the process, George. Sure, so for this drafting of, of uh, OTP, if you guys are familiar, usually in terms of the address, it is a very straightforward written address where you write the street name, the unit number, as well as the postal code. But for this um, particular um, OTP, it wasn't that straightforward, just even on the name itself, because if you even write down the Milkim number, the volume number, and even down to the folio number according to the SLA in list. And uh, that is just at the start. Of course, there are a lot of other um, clauses that were being covered uh, based on the duty that we have actually went through. And uh, just on the drafting of the OTP itself, took us about four to five weeks right. yeah, just to make sure that we finalise and to cover all the grounds. Of course, for such complicated OTPs, it has to be done by the lawyers. Yeah. And um, usually we'll advise seller to appoint a lawyer and then of course for the potential buyer to also appoint their own lawyer first. Let both lawyers run through the OTP together, make sure that both parties are very comfortable yeah. before they exchange a cheque and sign the OTP. Yeah. So uh, importantly, uh, I think as a seller, it's not to hastily issue a standard kind of templatized OTP. Make sure that you check through everything. As a buyer, of course, you have to make sure that before you pass over a check, you must make sure that you know um, the exact clauses that is going to be spelled in the OTP. Let your own representing lawyer run through as well. So uh, most importantly, just don't do it very hastily and uh, the, the duty check must be done uh, beforehand. Okay, great. So I think we have come to the end of this uh, special episode on how we sold case study on this uh, two very interesting landed properties at Woodsville Close, Potombase MRT Station, which is just about five minutes walk from here. I think we're very thankful that we are given this opportunity to also learn and grow uh, our knowledge as well in the landed in that team, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, we hope to see you soon on the next How We Sold. And my name is Melvin Lim. Josh Bing. Prop to Lim Brothers. Always happy to show the place. Take care.